Attention pre-PA students and PA students. I am excited to announce that Get That C University will be launching this coming Sunday, October 11th. Get That C University is the coolest place to help you get into PA school and through PA school. So go right now to getthatcuniversity.com and sign up so you can be the first to know when the site launches. And in celebration of the launch of Get That C University, I will be coming out with a brand new video every day this week answering all of your questions. So leave a comment in the comment section below and tune in to see if your comment is one of those that I answer. Go on over to Get That C University right now and sign up so we can help you get that C. What's up you guys, it's Sedona, welcome back to my channel. So welcome again to the official celebratory launch week of Get That C University. And and in celebration of that launch, you know that I'm coming to you every day this week just with a new video talking about various different questions that you guys may have and I'm answering them for you all as I go along. So if you haven't already done so, leave a question in the comment section and see if I get to your question in either one of these Q and A's or a Q and A that I do via my IG stories. All right, so um, I have a few questions that I wanted to answer for you all. Uh, someone wrote, a couple and so I'm gonna try to get through as many as I can. So this set is from Benafia Sago. She says, hello Adana, I have a couple of questions. Are there PA schools offering a dual degree in MPH and PA? I'm currently in an MPH program in maternal and child health and it's to two years. However, I'm eager to start PA school so I could start being a service in the hospital in the hospital, especially children that need help. Okay, so the first question for me to answer is, Do they, are there PA programs that have dual programs, dual P MPHs and PA programs? And the answer is yes. Um, there are several schools that offer a dual degree. You will complete that degree typically in three years rather than the two years that usually takes for PA school. Um, and I believe they tend to start off with the MPH first and then you, you go into like your didactics and stuff for PA school. Because just like when you're doing like an MD, um, and like an MD PhD program, you know, they want to know that you're you're in this for the long haul. So you start off with like a couple years of MD and then you go right in the middle for your MP and your PhD. So you cannot like get out of the program <laughs> because if you do, you would have wasted some of your time like on the med school side. And then once you've completed your PhD, then you complete your Met the rest of your med school requirements. And so I think that's kind of how they like kind of front load it. But again, I mean, you just have to look at the programs. There's over 291 PA schools. And so there are several of them that are actually offering dual degrees. You just have to search for them. All right. Uh, the second question is, I shadowed a doctor when I was in high school and a bit when I was in uni. Can I count my high school hours as clinical hours? I got a job after college as a behavioral tech in a mental health slash rehab clinic and I was passing medication. Can that also count as my clinical hours? Thank you. All right, so like I tend not to answer these questions like, you know, matter of factly because again, each program is specific to their own requirements. So um, I'm gonna do my best to answer this question, but yet also like leave it open for you to ensure that you're going ahead and you're doing the research and you're asking the schools that you're really interested in, hey, will you accept these hours? So first question or first part of that second question, and I know you said you had a couple questions, but that question number two was like a 2A, 2B, so I'm just saying. But for that first um, part of question two, you asked about shadowing a doctor and can you use those hours that you shadowed the doctor in high school. So typically, there's not really a cap on the amount of like the time for your shadowing hours to have occurred. Uh, there may be some programs that would have wanted it within the last five to 10 years. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that all programs are like that. I've never really seen a cap placed on hours, but you want to make sure that the schools that you're applying to don't have that. So all that, all you have to do is go ahead and look at their requirements, look at what they're stating on their actual website. If it's not stated there and you're still confused and you still like are unsure and you don't want to really make any mistakes on your application, just go ahead and contact the program simple. All right. And then for question 2B, 
girl. Um, you said you got a job after college and you were passing out meds at a behavioral um, like institution. And so, yeah, as a tech, um, a lot of schools will accept those hours. Uh, a friend of mine was a tech uh, at a mental, like a mental ward. Um, and they, they counted their hours towards their direct patient care experience hours. So I think you just really have to talk to the programs and see, Hey, like, these are the these are the descriptions of what I did on my job. Will this suffice? And I mean, honestly, I really don't see that being an issue because as a CNA, you're kind of there and you're like just doing, you know, ADLs with the patient. As a GNA, you're passing out medication and those hours count towards patient care experience hours for particular programs. For some programs, it doesn't. So you, again, you just have to make sure that the program that you're really interested in applying to accept those accepts those hours. So this is from Tulip P and they're asking, they say, hi Adana, I am a recent grad and I've wanted to be work in clinical research using my degree for a while. However, I do research full time for t however, if I do research for full time for 2 years, my PCE hours will increase very slowly. Should I get a job with full time PCE to increase my hours faster and not do research at all? Now, let me just say this, okay? So like I am a big believer in doing what you want to do. Okay? Obviously within reason, you know, if you want to do research, if that's where your passion is, then do it. Like, don't skimp, like, especially if you're young. You know, if you're young and you have the time to do this, then experience every single thing that you could possibly experience because who knows, maybe after you've worked and you've gotten all these healthcare experience hours and these patient care experience hours and then you get into PA school and stuff, you won't have time to do research, you know, once you're a PA. So, just to get that out of the way, if you have the opportunity to do it right now, then do it. Now, if you have in your mind like, hey, you know, I want to get into PA school by the year 2022 or 2021, then obviously you have to take a step back and look at this realistically and say, okay, now is this realistic for me to not do, um, not do uh, my healthcare experience, my patient care experience hours now and like, kind of tack on to my research and make, bolster that aspect of my application, or is it better for me to do the patient care experience? When it comes to PA school, direct patient care experience is important. This is not like med school where research is, you know, really important and you're volunteering and your grades are important in terms of like GPA and stuff. PA school loves GPAs and volunteering, but PCE is king, okay? So the more hours that you have, the better your application looks. So that's just something that you should be able to take into consideration when you're trying to make this decision on if you should pass up on that opportunity or work um, and do the research for two years, okay? So this question is from Amy Disposorio, and she says, I heard from someone that being a pediatric PA is really depressing because you have to see children in pain all the time. Do you have a more holistic view of what it's like to be a pediatric PA? If GTCU has any pediatricians, do you know if one of them is going to be talking this week? I love your positive videos. Okay, so I don't know what you mean by talking this week. So like GTCU is a master class based platform. So if you, there is a pediatric PA or a pediatrician that uh, is on the site, their video will be up for you to view at your leisure. Um, so that is how this platform is based, okay? Now, with we are going to also be having on the platform live events where you will be able to com communicate and be in contact with individuals and professionals in their respective fields. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about like, you know, all of our different live conferences and, you know, asking questions to the professionals in the fields that you're interested in. With respect to the first part of your statement on like being a, pediat a pediatric PA is depressing. So like on my pediatric rotation, I had an amazing time. Like I was 
excited because every day like I would see these kids and they like were just great you know kids are wonderful um, and they always put a smile on my face they would say like the craziest things and you just couldn't help but like look at their little faces and be like okay like I, I will be okay now yes there were moments where there were kids that were really sick and I felt great even in that moment because I was able to comfort them for the most part you know or bring some type of uh, awareness of why they were feeling sick and that helped alleviate some of the stress from their family and their mom and you know ultimately like kids feed off of that and so they felt a little bit better at the end of the visit as well so that's just my two cents from a student standpoint I did eight weeks in peds and I loved every minute of it okay now, with respect to having um, a pediatrician or a pediatric PA on the site, I definitely plan on having those individuals for virtual shadowing so you can see exactly what it's like to be a pediatric PA. And then again, just kind of introducing them and involving them in some of our virtual conferences. So go ahead right now, sign up at GTCU. Um, for Get That C, so you go to getthatcuniversity.com right now, sign up so that you can see exactly when the site launches. It will be launching this Sunday, October 11th. And so once it launches, you can sign up and do all the various different things that you need to do and see all the different master classes and help yourself move further along the path to getting that C. All right, thank you guys so much for these questions. Leave some more questions for me, you guys. You know, we have what, like two or so more days in this whole like seven day celebration launch to GTCU. So leave some questions for me so that I can answer them for you and we can have a great time together. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please go ahead and like this video, subscribe and follow me on Instagram at AdonnaThePA. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.